everyone and welcome back. Let's talk about content projection and best practices for the design of the API of our components. So we will get back to component styling later in the course. Right now, let's talk a little bit about component design. Let's go here to the template where the font awesome input is being used. So as we can see, the placeholder is still email everywhere. And this is because we are using here a hard-coded placeholder. So typically, this would be a property. So this would be a property that we would pass on to this input. And this would come from a variable that is available here at the level of the component input. So we would call it simply placeholder, so the same name. And we are going to define it here. So this will be an input as well. This would have been passed on from the exterior of the component. And this will be a string with a default value empty string. So we can actually remove the type annotation in this case. And now, if we go back here to the application component, we are going to be able to pass in here, for example, at the level of the lock, we are going to be able to pass in here a placeholder as an input property. So we are going to say that the placeholder is going to be password. If we hit Ctrl S, we are going to see that this functionality is being applied as expected. So maybe we would think that it would be a good design to do the same thing for all the other properties of the input. But let me give you a quick example of why this would not be a good idea, because an input HTML tag might have a lot of properties in a production scenario. So not only the type and the name if it's part of a form and the placeholder, but it could have multiple validator attributes. It would have the autocomplete attribute. This is a custom Stripe attribute. And if we add all the accessibility related attributes, we are looking at tens of input properties for this input. So at that point, the vast majority of the code of the component would just be to duplicate the properties that are already part of the normal HTML input. There wouldn't be much more functionality to the component. And also it creates other problems. So I will remove here this example input. Another problem that this approach would create is what if this input would be part of an Angular form? So we would like to add here, for example, the form control directive. We would not be able to do so here at the level of the template where this component is being used. So if we want this to be integrated with Angular forms, we would also have to duplicate all the Angular forms properties on an input. And that is also not practical. So instead, let's look at an alternative component design. This is a general design practice that, if possible, we should avoid wrapping uh, plain HTML elements, especially leaf elements like inputs or select boxes. These elements are better if they are included here in the original component and not being wrapped around in a custom component because of these problems that we have just seen. So how could we do this? Angular provides us a feature that is meant precisely for this, which is called content projection. So the way that this works is here inside the custom element, our component, we can pass in here some content that can be used in the template of the component. Let's have a look. We can remove this placeholder property already. And if we go here to the input component, actually, we can remove this as well and we are going to remove this input from the template of this component. Instead, if the component needs an input, we are going to pass it here in the content body of the component tag. So we are going to tell Angular to take anything that it finds here inside this component tag and to place it inside the template. In order to do that, we need to add here the ng-content core directive. So what this directive will do is it will say that here in this part of the font awesome input, we are going to put anything that Angular finds here inside the content part of the element. So we are going to remove here form control. And for the moment, we are going to apply here the placeholder again. We're going to say that the placeholder is email. And let's quickly apply the same system here to the rest of the elements. So here the input would be password. We are going to remove here the other elements just to make it simple, this demonstration. 
we're going to pass in here the placeholder password and here the placeholder let's say that it will be stripe and here paypal so with this in place if we now refresh the application we are going to see that the placeholders are being applied as expected so there are some styling issues we are going to cover that in a moment but right now we can see that this content here the content inside the component tag is being applied here inside the template using the ng content core directive we are going to see several more advanced use cases of ng content throughout the course right now let's have a look at this styling issue so our component was being styled correctly but now with the use of ng content we can see that the border none style is not being applied anymore for example so how is this working what is going on is it possible to style uh, elements using ng content we're going to find out how to solve this this is coming right up in the next lesson